guide in this video we're going to look at how to create a gif and add it to your custom live wallpaper yes you can do this with complex animations as you can see here i got this gif from jiffy.com i actually have two gifs i want to show you one that i got from jiffy.com that i created and then also one that i used uh, by or one that I created by using the burst mode on my camera on my Galaxy S7. A lot of the Android devices nowadays, you can hold down that camera button and it'll take burst shots. So we can create a GIF with that as well. Um, but since I have the Joker right here, let me go ahead and show you something real quick. If you go to Jiffy.com, download whichever one you want. I think I did the social one. And on my Mac, when I download that GIF, what it'll do if I open it up and preview, it'll give me each individual frame. There's 24 frames here. I'm only going to use 21 of them. Uh, the reason why I'm just going to make the math a little bit easier and plus uh, <laughs> I, it's a lot of images to add. You have to add all of these images as globals into your custom live wallpaper. So export these images, each individual frame of your GIF, and that's what I've done over here. I've I have exported them as JPEGs. You want to be real careful and watch the file size of each image. My image sizes are only a couple of kilobytes, 28 kilobytes. Um, we don't have megabytes here. You want to watch out if you're starting to use megabytes and you're adding a bunch of images because your preset's going to be real big when you go to save it. With that said, you want to get these images on your device, import them as globals, and use the same numbers, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It helps with the organization. Before we dive into that one though, again, let me show you the burst shot, uh, just another GIF that I created in custom live wallpaper. And again, this one that I'm about to show you now was created using my cell phone camera in burst mode. So here is the grill, let's have a look at that. And this one was created using 11 images. Uh, uh, again, I'm thinking, okay, I'm using 21 for Joker. I'm using 11 for my grill. Uh, I want to find something that I can divide by 100 easily. Now, <laughs> uh, 100 divided by 11 doesn't work nice. 100 divided by 21 doesn't work nice. But 100 divided by 20, that works great. 100 divided by 10, that works great. So I'm using one additional image over what I can divide something by 100 nicely. 100 divided by 10 is 10 but I'm gonna use 11 images. 100 divided by 20 is five, but I'm gonna use 21 images. And you'll see why when we go create our complex animations. It makes your numbers easier when you go and start changing these complex animations. Let's go ahead and have a look back at the Joker and let's get started with this tutorial. So back inside the Joker GIF, let's go over to globals and I have, I'm only gonna use 21, but I think when I originally created this, I added all 24, but again, I'm only going to use 21 of these. So I have them on my, on my device, I've imported them as global bitmaps, and then we also have one additional global, the duration. Uh, this is gonna be used to speed up or slow down. Notice if I bump this up to 50 or whatever number I want it to be, this GIF is anim animating a lot slower, whereas if I change the duration, say, to like two or one, now the Joker's going crazy. So, you know, that's there for just quick customization uh, when you wanna change the speed of your GIF. Going back to our items, let, do not add all of these at one time. Let's start with just adding one of your images, the first image. So add image, I'm just gonna show this to you real quick, and that's gonna be at the very bottom of this list, but add that image, go ahead and pick your global, and let's pick the first one. Go ahead and resize it, however big you want, and go ahead and position it wherever you want it. Um, I've already done this, but I just wanna show you, go ahead and get that set up. Where do you want it? Um, how big do you want it? Go ahead and get that set up in that first one because we're gonna start copying and pasting this image in a second and making some quick changes to our animations as well as whatever uh, image we wanna pick. So we have that done. I already have that done here, but again, start with the first one and I'm going to actually go back to the top of this list. And inside of this first image right here, I have it set up as a global one. Animation, nothing. Your first image is always gonna be showing, but the way we have this layered, um, when the second image pops in and then the third one pops in and the fourth one pops in, they're going to lay over each other, so it's gonna hide the one beneath it. So when two pops in, it's gonna hide the first one. I'm gonna always leave that first one there. It's easy, it, I don't think it's gonna use a lot of resources. I don't think it drains the battery a lot. I haven't been using it a lot, a lot, but I, I don't notice anything crazy. Uh, it's just something cool to show somebody, you know what I'm saying? So here we go, image number two. All I'm doing there is really I'm just copying the first one and I'm pasting it and I'm just renaming it for organization. And then make sure you pick your second image. 
Underneath animation, we're going to go to complex animation. It's set to loop. And then we are going to go to entries. And this is where, uh, like I said, I'm picking numbers that go into 100 nicely, like 100 divided by 20 is 5. So I'm going from 0% to 5%. That's all I'm adding in this second image, the second image now. So at the beginning of this animation, I don't want to see, at the beginning of this loop, I don't want to see that second image. 5% of the way through the animation, I do want to see it. And that's what this transparency does. Transparency set to 100 is completely transparent. You can't see it. Zero transparency means it's not transparent at all. You can see the whole thing. And I have that set to come in at 5%. So it's going to fade in, but it's going to fade in real fast. All right, so that's it for that one. And then one more thing inside of that animation. Let's make sure we go ahead and set our duration to GV dir. All right, so that's our second picture. Let's go back to the third picture now. To get to the third picture, copy and paste your second image. So here's image number three. I've got it set as my global and inside of its animation, everything from here on out is going to be three entries. Okay, three entries for all of them. Now what we want to do here, this is our third image. So for zero, at the very beginning of our animation, 100% transparent. 5% of the way through our animation, 100% transparent. Basically nothing's going to happen to this picture for the first 5% of this animation. But then we're bumping up another 5% to get to 10% and we want it to be completely non-transparent. So notice I have that set there. And now as I go through and show you the rest of these complex animations or some of them, you're going to see a pattern. What's going to happen here is this one's always going to be zero because I don't want to see these images at the beginning. I want them to stay completely invisible, completely transparent up to a certain percentage. That's what this is going to do. And then I'm going to bump up five more percent and I'm going to set that transparency to zero. That's what's going to make it flash or fade in real quick. And if we keep this uh, proportional, it's going to be relatively smooth for a GIF at least, right? So if I check that, that's that third image. Again, I copied and pasted, so it's still keeping that GV dir for the duration. Now if I back out and I go to the fourth image, I'm picking my fourth image, animation, complex animation. Like I said, everything from here on out has three entries. And the 0%, 100% transparent at the 0% spot of our complex animation. And then like I said, I'm bumping these up five. So this, is, this one's gonna be 10 and 15. Uh, if we go to the fifth one, fifth image, animation, complex animation, entries. Now we got 15, 20. So it's going 10, 15, then 15, 20, then 20, 25, then 25, 30. And that pattern keeps on going. That's why I'm picking 21 images. Because if you keep this pattern going, again, I'm not changing anything about this. If you keep this pattern going, when I get to my 21st image, Assuming I did everything correctly, I don't think I skipped any, but uh, my 21st image is going to be, obviously pick the 21st image, animation, complex animation, three entries, and then look at this. So that's why I'm picking things that go into 100 real nice. But we need that 21st picture to, to have, I know 100 divided by... Uh, 20 is 5, but we need 21 of them. That way we can start at 0, and we're going 0 to 5, 5 to 10, 10 to 15, 15 to 20, 20 to 25, etc. That's going to be 21 of those transitions. So that's why I have 21 pictures here. And if you have this set up correctly, you, you have your GV dir. You can quickly go in here and change the speed of this thing. For example, right now, Joker's uh, he's moving kind of fast. If I want to slow him down, that's why I have that GV dir linked to all of these complex animations, all of these pictures. That way I can go over here quickly and I can just slow the Joker down a little bit. I'm going to bump him on up to, say, four seconds. That's 40. And now that GIF is going to be a lot slower. So you can get whatever speed you want out of this thing. And there you have it. That's two examples of a GIF. Yeah, I didn't go into detail on the grill one, but again, you can import your burst mode, your burst photos off of your Android device and create a GIF on your custom live wallpaper. And that's it for this video. I hope it helped.